This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Oh, that was... <laughs> I don't know why I did the sound of an elephant marching band going down the stairs. The shutter opened up for the first time in a very long while. Rena located the light switch and wasted no time going inside. I followed her in. We climbed a narrow staircase. It had looked like nothing more than a warehouse, but now that I was inside, I could feel how lived in it was. It was a person's home. We go upstairs, they're like, Get out of here! We're playing Minecraft! <laughs> hey, Ruben! How's it going? Oh, did I just finish a famous scene or something? Yeah, I just had a scene where Mion was, like, holding the ladder for us, and then she was just, like, kind of freaking out. It was a great one. <laughs> I'm having a blast. <laughs> Somehow the scent of the two of them filled the place. This is definitely where Rika and Satoko lived. So, for those of you who know what happens in this chapter, spoiler-free question, just how much more to the chapter 2 is there? Because I'm trying to basically estimate how late I should stream before ending, and so we can finish it on Halloween. Because ideally, I don't want to stream till like 3 a.m. on tonight or Halloween, but if I had to stream really late one night, I'd want it to be this one, because I have to work after Halloween. But I don't have to work after tonight. <laughs> That was a long roundabout way, so I'm just I'm basically just trying to figure out how many more parts of Chapter 2 there are. This was definitely where Rika and Satoko lived. Do we get, like, a, a BG of it? We do! Oh, this, this is a quaint little place. The first floor doubled as a town assembly warehouse, but the second floor was a space entirely for living. Just like a one-room apartment, past the kitchen was a living room taking up about 150 square feet. Dressers, cupboards, and the like were packed into the space, and in the corner there was a huge pile of clothes that appeared to have just been taken in from outside. In the center of the living room was a fold-up table, and on it were small containers for things like soy sauce and salad dressing. The sense of a frugal lifestyle drifted from it all. Well, yeah, it's hard to live a non-frugal lifestyle if the only two people living here are ten-year-olds with no income. I'm sure Rika can use her charms to have old people be like, Oh, Rika, you're so cute. Here, we'll buy your groceries for you. Which, I mean, good for them. <laughs> There's still quite a bit to go in Chapter 2. Wonderful. It was strange that they weren't here in the middle of the night like this. The adults, climbing the stairs one at a time, began to make a fuss and talk amongst themselves. The village had just been thrown into chaos yesterday because of the mayor's disappearance. Then today, even Rika and Satoko had. Were they out playing somewhere together? At night?! <laughs> that can't be. Their bicycles aren't here, though. Where would they have gone so late at night? Have they just not come back yet? Where did they go? The adults put forth various possibilities, and the house immediately devolved into a state of confusion. Eventually, Mion settled them down. The adult's face is pale at Mion's declaration. Mai and Rena's did as well. Makino-san it's like we got some missing persons. Mion promptly gave directions to the villagers. The adults followed them without hesitation, despite her age. Got it. The adults all roared in reply and pounded down back the stairs below. I'm an old man! Mion grinned proudly, took the receiver, and got started. Rana gave Mion a trusting look, considering her dependent bull for doing all this. My feelings, though, were a little more complicated, since her leadership seemed to be affirming the Sonazaki family successor impression that Shion and Uisi-san had given me. Stop right there, Keiichi Maibara. 
None of that matters right now. The most important thing is to make sure Rika and Satoko are safe. Any theories on what's happening this time around? Well, I thought that it was Takano who was kind of like doing veins, but then we, she was confirmed to have burned alive. So it pro I don't really see how it could be her. Uh, I mean, it's definitely trying to convince me that Mion is like kind of manipulating all this stuff behind the scenes but like that's the easy way out i don't think they're gonna go that direction i think that's gonna be like a, a red herring oh that's it the the mastermind behind this is red herring obviously that's it back it up folks um i don't really know i still have no real ideas of who's doing all of the murders and like all the disappearances but i do think shion is going crazy a little bit like and it's going to get worse as time goes on. But otherwise, I'm just kind of sitting back in here for the ride. Let's see. Couldn't there be a clue hinting at where they might have gone somewhere in this room? If we tore the whole place apart and figured out what was different from before, we might be able to speculate, but there was nothing strange about this room. And there was no clues in sight. In the first place, I had never been here before. There was no way for me to know what was different if I didn't know how the room usually looked. Hey, don't give up, Keiichi Maibara. Stop thinking and start looking. For something. In search of something, I tried pulling open the dresser drawers and open the windows. I didn't uncover anything meaningful, though. Rena, also unable to stand around doing nothing, was looking around the room like I was. <laughs> Rana's hungry. As we were searching, it got noisy outside. Villagers were quickly assembling here, having heard the commotion. Of course, a lot of them were probably people Mion had called. She called the police! Okay. If she called the police, could she really be a bad guy? I mean, she's also kind of going crazy, but eh, I don't know what to think. Mion began descending the stairs, and we followed her out the front of the house. There were already ten adults there, and all of them looked uneasy. Your theory, Mion put a hit on Takano. That, that could be true. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> I suddenly noticed that the old people from the shrine were here as well, and they were praying for Rika-chan's safety, rubbing their prayer beads. This had gotten bad. This wasn't just a problem between friends anymore. The villagers all formed a ring around Mion, swarming her. Mion raised her right hand as if silently telling them to call them down. It would definitely be hard for someone to wake up Rika if she had eaten a good full meal and fallen asleep like a kitten afterwards. Oh, how nice it would be if that were the case. Or it could be bad! <laughs> Mio's face grew remarkably more grim, and a wave of silence washed over the adults. <laughs> I know that's how I say got it as well. With that as their signal, the adults scattered in every direction. I figured I should scatter somewhere as well, so I started walking unsteadily in a direction no one else had gone in. I was getting farther and farther from people. I didn't feel scared or anything, though. If someone were made to disappear, Shion and I should be first. <sighs> it would have been perfectly normal for me to be scared of the dark. However, I didn't feel that way. Why was that? It was because tonight... Someone had already disappeared, so nobody else would disappear tonight. It would take some time before I, exhausted as I was, would feel guilt at the cause of my own selfish sense of relief. Yikes. Uh, they, they, might, they might be dead. They might be. I hope not.
Oh, wow. We get the nighttime helicopter shot now. Suddenly, my vision cleared and a cold wind caressed my body. Oh, is that so? Wow. I, why don't we get more helicopter shots like this? This is so nice. How far up is this going to go? Good golly gosh! Wow. Very nice. Suddenly my vision cleared and a cold wind caressed my body. This was the hill from which you could see the whole village. Looking down from this hill I could see lights on here and there, and I knew the entire village had awoken from its slumber. First Takano and Tomotake, then the mayor, and now even Rika and Satoko had been sacrificed, and word of it was spreading everywhere. See, like, it's not the whole village is a death cult that's kidnapping people, because they would not do that to Rika. They have too much respect for her, so there's something else going on behind the scenes. The strength in my knees left me. Yeah, I know the whole village, it's not called Hinamizawa, but, like, it's a real village. Which, man, imagine playing this game if you lived in that village. Like, oh, that would totally add to the creep factor. <sighs> this could no longer be a joke. We could have found them. Mion would have told me I was a worrywart, Rena would just be glad we did, and they would have smiled at me. My hopes disappeared as if I were awakening from a dream. That was what the view I could see was telling me. Following my knees, my arms bent, both bent forward onto the ground, and I clawed at it with my nails. Don't do that! I couldn't figure out if I was feeling sorrow or frustration. <laughs> I couldn't endure the burden of my own sin, and I had just told Rika-chan about it. They had nothing to do with it, but Rika-chan and even Satoko had been sacrificed. It was like a cross that Chion and I would each have to bear the weight until we ourselves were erased. Well, if I'm going that far, then the problem started long before that. My original sin of breaking taboo and entering the ritual warehouse without asking. I knew I shouldn't have gone there and there from the start! Yet I lost out to cheap curiosity. I hadn't felt so angry at myself until this very moment. There was a crunching sound. I wasn't even interested in who made the sound, despondent as I was. Is it Shelly the Killer? Keichiko? Oh no, it's Rena. Even more dangerous. Keichiko? It was Rena. Perhaps my clawing at the ground made it look like I was having stomach pains. She ran over and rubbed my back to make me feel better. I could tell Rena was doing her best to choose the right words out of consideration for me. That's why I could sense her intent behind those words. Keichi-kun, you know why Rika and Satoko disappeared, don't you? Is that what, is what she really meant to say. Because it was an emergency, Rena had ignored the reason why I wanted to make sure Rika was safe, but now that we'd actually confirmed her disappearance, it was only natural Rena would start to wonder about why. However, with the situation having gone this far, I couldn't possibly tell her now. I didn't want to admit that Rika and Satoko had disappeared, but I couldn't let Rena disappear too. <laughs> Rena sat down, bringing her eyes level with mine. Rena showed me her watch as she, as she said that. It was long past one in the morning. Time was passing too quickly. Had I been crawling around here for that long? We're not going to school tomorrow! I've, I've mentioned it before, DX. I don't play games unless they have Banner soundtracks. I'm, it's not like, oh, this is a game of Banner soundtrack. If not, I'm not going to play it. It's just every game that I play coincidentally happens to have a Banner soundtrack. <laughs> I was a little upset that they weren't allotting as much time to this as they had to search for the mayor last night, but that was something I, the cause of everything, had no right to criticize them for. Okay. 
So much for the cars guarding their house. Remarking, hearing that remark, I looked down at the village to see that there were indeed more cars than one would normally expect at this hour, coming from the darkness on the other side of the mountain. However, none of their emergency lights were on. Of course, their siren sirens weren't wailing either. That's right. All of the incidents that occurred right after Watanagashi were seen as the product of Oyashirasama's curse, and would be handled in secrecy. Rika and Satoko too. Their disappearance would end up exactly like the other serial incidents in the past. Surreptuous. Unresolved. Declared a mystery. And disappear from memory. Rika's face, her sweet face like a western doll's, would fade away. Satoko's smile, her energetic feigned smile, would fade away. And the more I try, the more I tried to remember them, the less I would be able to. I deserved to be called an idiot dozens of times over, and it wouldn't be enough. I couldn't hold back the tears at my own sheer stupidity. I wasn't about to deny it. I couldn't. Even so, I couldn't affirm it either. I wanted to at least keep Rena out of this. If she found out, she would become involved. If I couldn't get to sleep, then I at least wanted to search for Rika and Satogo until I collapsed. The entire village was looking, and yet they still hadn't been found. I don't think I'd be able to find them if I went looking alone at this point. Still, I had to do it. I had said that to myself, in self-deprecation, but I soon realized that Rena was silently trying to find the meaning in my mumblings. I realized I had misspoke. That can't be. Keiichi, you're not at fault. I was happy that Rena said these things to me. But she only did so because she didn't know the truth. If she knew that everything that had been caused by breaking taboo on the night of Watanagashi, then even Rena would curse my existence. However, I can't even allow for those curses. That would mean confessing my own crimes to Rena. If I spilled even one word of having snuck into the ritual storehouse on the night of Watanagashi, then even Rena could disappear tomorrow night. The gentle, spirited, always joking, always howling, but at a time like this, the most dependable person in the world, Rena, might disappear. I don't want that. Anything but that. This time, I need to bear my own cross. <sighs> Alone. Maybe Rika and Satoko just went on a cross-country trip to go to Disneyland. That's my current theory. The shivering in my veins rushed up my back and replaced the sorrow in my heart with fear. I didn't. I didn't tell her anything, did I? Maybe I... I accidentally said something that caused Rena to figure it out. This is... This is bad. Now, Rena will disappear, Rena will disappear, Rena will disappear. Then Rena, the same way as I always did, grabbed my head and began to pet it roughly. She puts more force into the hand, rubbing my head. She's really nice. <laughs> Rena just needs to stay on her meds, honestly. Yes. And she's very nice. I mean, someone's been sacrificed every night so far. There was no proof that it wouldn't happen again tomorrow night. There was even less proof, after all, that the sacrifice wouldn't be Rena. I don't care who you are. Just, please, if you're going to erase someone, erase me first. Please, stop cruelly getting rid of people we're close to, like the mayor for Shion and Rika and Satoko for me. Shion's hysterical shouting came back to mind. They must be planning to kill us last of all. 
they're not killing the first people who come to mind. They start by killing those we're close to. Then after they've caused us so much pain, then they'll kill us. That must be what they're doing. <laughs> Please, don't disappear. Please don't. As long as I'm still here, I can no longer conceal the sobs welling up within me. Ah, tear water tea. Rana prompted me to stand. I didn't have the energy to oppose her, so I stood as she urged me to. Rena's a real winner in this timeline. We returned to the shrine grounds to find several gas stoves there with miso soup and big pots. The many villagers there sipped at the soup. We were, they were given in dead, stony silence. Their expressions were absolutely exhausted. <sighs> Everyone had just been running around the village until a little while ago. From the dreary looks on their faces, though, I assumed they hadn't come up with anything yet. Mio and held out some miso soup for me, but I refused the offer. I didn't have much of an appetite. <laughs> but it's poisoned! We need to get Steve on here? Steve and Blue, that we can find the clues. Mion took a sip of her soup, her expression frank. I told you, secret cross-country trip to Disneyland Tokyo. Man, the music's good. When it gets dark out in Hinamizawa, people quickly vanish from the streets. Aside from adults hurrying back home from town in cars or on bicycles, it was normal to see absolutely nobody walking around outside. That's, that's my favorite time to go for walks, is at night, when it's dark and there's like nobody out. I love doing that. You get to see the world in a new way. It, it's beautiful. And in the summer, it's nice and cool. You don't have to do it while it's like hot and sweaty and salt. Of course, if you do that in the winter, then, oh man, you better bundle up. Oh, but also in winter, you can go out at like 5.30 p.m. and it's pitch black. <sighs> it wasn't at all strange that nobody had seen Rika and Satoko riding their bikes. Mion's apathetic tone pricked my nerves, but that anger quickly subsided. She had been doing all sorts of things to try and find Rika until just a second ago. If I asked her, she'd probably say she was up all night last night, too, looking for the mayor, wouldn't she? I know. I mean... Here's the thing, though. If they were able to kidnap them without anyone knowing, they'll get away with it. It's sad, but true. It's It would be way too easy to dispose of them with no evidence. Morbid, I know, but... It would embolden them. Maybe they just really hate Hinamizawa. She must have been far more fatigued than I was. Besides, what about me? I had spent the whole time hunched in over an indecision all alone. I had no right to say anything about Mion. あ、もちろん終わりじゃないよ。明るくなったら警察も増援を入れて徹底的に探すってさ。沖宮の方に行ってる可能性もあるからね。村長の件も含めて、獅子骨市全体で目撃情報がないか洗うって言ってる。それよ
Shion told us earlier that she thought people were spying or stalking her and watching her and told us to be wary of that. And now Mion's saying the same thing, almost like a reminder. Huh. And if that's the case, then it was Shion who was at the ladder as well. Because I'm pretty sure Shion's going crazy. The question is, is Mion going crazy as well? Huh. Mion demanded this with a serious expression. I was being criticized for how inconsiderate I had been. Despite being in so much pain, I was frustrated that I was being criticized, but it was my sin. My sin, and I must bear it alone. <laughs> Mio, now aware that nothing had happened, heaved a big sigh with her shoulders, looking relieved. Oh, hey, boy! You're up late. We heard the repulsive voice of a fat man. Hey, be nice to him! <laughs> it was Uizi-san, trailed by a handful of police officers. He was acting energetically, in a way unfitting given the situation. Mion didn't like Uizi-san very much. Her cold attitude, though, didn't seem to bother Uizi in the slightest. It was like splashing water in a frog's face. They, they were looking for the mayor a lot, yeah. He recommended it to his subordinates, but everyone gave dry smiles and refused. We're gonna have to pull out the thinking chair for this one. <laughs> Rena's smile was warm enough to replace the miso soup. <laughs> he didn't say a word about having found any new clues. In other words, there had been no progress. That sure was an annoying way of beating around the bush. もう本当に遅い時間です。どうぞお若い皆さんはお帰りになってお休みになってください。体に触りますよ。そうだよ。ケイちゃんも<笑> Oh, don't bring up Soba, man. <laughs> I've had enough of Soba in the Let's Play that we uploaded in like two years. Three years. I wasn't really in the mood for laughter. In fact, Uisi-san was the only one laughing like an idiot. <laughs> On my end, I can still clearly see her choker, but yeah, if, if you squint a little, it does look like she has a disembodied head a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, let's... No, let's take the police car back. We got a trunk, kid. We may have gotten pretty sleepy, but we just needed a ride to ride home at this point. I didn't want to bother the police like that. Rena, however, nodded. <laughs> then you can tell people that you got had to be taken home in a police cruiser. When I thought about it carefully, I realized that Rena's idea was extremely rational. <laughs> By the way, I want to talk to you more about the night of Watanagashi. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sleepy. <laughs> I waved my hand as well, saying goodbye. Rika and Satoko still hadn't been found. My unease, however, was steadily being pushed away by sleepiness. Rana showed the police where our bicycles were so that Uisi-san could haul them up to the truck. He prompted us to get into the back seat. I could hear the squ uh, spring squeaking as I sat down onto a seat that would normally hurt my rear end, but at this point it was very soft and was more than comfortable enough for me to fall asleep on. 
お嬢さんの家から行きましょう。住所はどちらですか<笑> ?So we'll have a little bit of time where we're alone with u i s i ありがとうございます。私の家はですね、えっと。<笑> This way, we don't have to give a real address. Rena's voice slowly grew distant. I felt myself being sucked into the void of sleep. <laughs>